In today's episode, we're going to recycle some old curtains, use four different types of glue, realize that nothing can save you from hot glue burns, endure the suffering of waiting for things to dry, but in the end... I love it! Hello, my dear friends, welcome to my boudoir, aka my dressing room. For me, every single day starts in this room. Getting ready and playing dress up is my own personal form of therapy. Therefore, my dressing room is one of my favorite places in the house. At the moment, this room is just a skeleton. It has everything it needs to have, but very little magic. I decorate my home relying on how I want a certain room to make me feel. In my dressing room, I want to feel like Dita Von Teese herself. We already have decorated my vanity table in this glamorous yet dark inclined manner, and today we will be giving an opulent treatment to a small section of my wardrobe, my jewelry chest. My wardrobe is just your regular IKEA PAX system, in need of its own big transformation, of course. Pax Wardrobe offers these great jewelry trays in different layouts, and as you can see, they make a lovely storage and display for accessories and jewelry. However, living with this system for a while, I found that it could use some organizational changes to suit my collection better, as well as the obvious. This grey felt ain't screaming vintage glamour. By now you probably figured. I love jewelry, and I have a couple new additions to my collection that I would like to share with you. This video was brought to you with Ita Love. A Toronto-based brand offering beautifully handcrafted sterling silver accessories. I got the Hellcat Onyx ring and no bed of roses pendant. I adore how dark and elegant they are, and the attention to details both definitely will become a staple in my accessorizing game. I know that you, macabre lovers, totally will be into this jewelry brand, and you have a chance to win a $500 gift card to treat yourself with Ita Love. To enter the giveaway, leave a comment under this video and click the link in the description to sign up for Ita Love mailing list. When you do so, you will get a $25 gift card in your mailbox. So it's a win-win. Go treat yourself! If you want to be twins with me and get the same pieces I did, there will also be links in the description box below. Now, let's get those jewelry trays a magical makeover. Let's begin with getting our fabric ready. I am using old curtains that came with the house. I prefer my curtains floor to ceiling and these aren't, so now they are getting a new life. They are high quality heavy cotton velvet and I have saved them for projects like this. When choosing fabric for your own project, I recommend getting something medium to heavy weight with no stretch. Thrifting old curtains is a great option. This project will require a lot of pleating and trimming, so make sure you have enough fabric to spare. Starting with my sunglasses and hair accessories tray. It doesn't need any structural changes. Cut a piece of fabric that is bigger than the object you are covering. Here I am making sure it's going to be enough to cover every single section. If you are using a fabric that has a pile, like velvet in my case, make sure the direction of the pile is going where you want it to, and repeat that on every piece. Using a spray adhesive, this one worked great, I will leave a materials list for you in the description box. The process is quite straightforward. Position your fabric, fold it back, spray, apply fabric and smooth. Really work it in there, push it in every corner, press it down very well. Fabric will guide you where it wants to fold or crease. In this case, I am making a pleat at every corner and creases at the deep of every section of the tray. This adhesive gives you time to reposition the fabric and even peel it back where needed. However, I recommend working in small sections for best results. If you will be using the same glue and end up getting it all over your fingers, my pro tip, it comes off very easily with a little oil. I'm showing you the entire process of covering this tray, so you get a hang of it. It isn't quick, but it's fairly easy and you will get faster as you go. Let's move on to the next tray, my belt tray. No structural changes on this one either, except I used some fabric glue to stick the grid down onto the felt pad. I did that in the drawer to ensure it will fit right back in. 
I cut a generous piece of fabric and started the glue up process from the middle going out, pressing into all corners very well. With this layout the fabric wanted to bunch up at every cross joint and it created those cool looking roses. I like the drapey look, so I am covering everything in one piece. If you wanted to go for a smooth look, I suggest covering every single piece separately and putting it back together in the end. At every end bit I am making something vaguely resembling a box pleat and folding and gluing down all the edges. I debated adding a decorative backing, but no one will ever see it and I am trying to be less of a perfectionist. I will not be adding anything else to this tray, so it is now complete. Time for structural modifications! My choker and miscellaneous tray. I want to add more cross dividers into the two middle sections so I can improve the organizational aspect of this tray and give each little thing its own home. To achieve that I have cut to size pieces of 3mm felt, two pairs of each, and using fabric glue sandwich them together. Then I cut each in the middle to assemble in the same manner as the original grid. and stuck them right in using hot glue. These silicone thimbles are great at protecting your fingers from hot glue burns. I, however, need to buy one for every finger, because I burned myself regardless. The process of covering this tray with fabric is exactly the same as the previous one, except there is much more finessing. So I will not be boring you with that, and let's move on to the next. My necklace and pendant tray. Here I want to add a ton of dividers to make smaller sections so that I can see every necklace better and they don't get tangled all together. I made a template that fits perfectly into the groove and then cut a bunch of them out of the same felt. I stuck them down using hot glue again, it gives the structure more rigidity than other kinds of glues that I've been using in this project. To cover this one efficiently, the best way I found was to work on one row at a time and use a nice round object to press the fabric in place. In my case, it's a caster that you will see used in a future video. Any ideas what it's for? I'm sure by now you totally got the hang of the whole spray smooth fold thing, so let's move on to the last pair of trays. Rings, earrings, brooches, bracelets and special items. I want to add more of the ring holders onto the left side of each one. They work great for holding earrings too. And some cushions for brooches and hat pins. I glued the two parts together using construction adhesive for the strongest hold and popped them back in the drawer to dry. After failing to create the ring holders by hot gluing the rolls directly to the felt, I came up with the rubber band method. I removed the felt structure from the tray, I secured the start with hot glue and trimmed off the excess. I'm using poly padding for this. I make a fold and secure it down with the rubber band. I used padding because I already had it, but I think using foam would have been a better choice. So if you don't have anything in your stash, I'd recommend getting foam over padding. I did my best to create uniform rolls. I filled two sections and secured the end with hot glue. Then trimmed the excess from the sides and working on one side at a time, spread out the elastic bands as evenly as possible and secure with a generous amount of hot glue. Voila! Pop the section back in place. I left the back two sections alone for one tray and added a cushion to the other. Look, I know, this project is a lot, but stick with me. The end result is worth it and you can apply the same technique to so many things. It was difficult to get a good shot of covering the ring holder bits with velvet because it is quite an intense process. The principle is that you spread the two rolls and spray the glue in the crease. Fold the fabric back over and press onto the top of the roll with one hand. Your other hand is under the fabric, separating the rolls as you push the fabric into the fold with your thumb. 
after take an object like scissors and run it either way into the crease, while also holding the fabric to create tension. Make sure the fabric piece you cut is longer than what you think you need. These ring holders eat up a lot of it. Again, spread and spray, fold fabric back over, press on top of the roll, spread the rolls underneath and push fabric in the crease. Go over the crease with scissors. The rest of the process you already know. I have covered each of the sections separately, trimmed off the excess fabric and folded it under and over while securing with a generous amount of fabric glue and clumping the fold down to dry. I have spared you from watching me trim all the excess fabric. I trimmed it flush to the edge. Now, using a lot of glue, we need to secure each fold and crease and make it as flat as possible. To do that, I'm clamping it down with a metal ruler to dry. There was a lot of glue residue and fibers left behind, so I covered the sides with masking tape. Now it's a good time to give this velvet a clean, because we are finally painting the sides! I used two coats of my dressing room wall paint. Here you can get as creative as you want and cover the sides however you please. What would you do for your project? Alright, the paint is now dry, I'm really happy how it turned out, it gave it almost leather-like texture and it looks really cool. Now it's time to complete this DIY and apply all of the fun finishing touches. To cover the raw edge I am using furnishing cord. It has a lip so it will sit right on top of the raw edges and give a gorgeous finish. I chose gold to make it pop. I am using fabric glue along the side, but secure the corners with a small bead of hot glue for extra hold. Afterwards, in the exact same manner, I applied two rows of wine red upholstery braid, facing either direction. Hot glue popped out in some places, so I used a tiny brush to paint over those. At last, it is time for the best part, organizing your jewelry in its new beautiful home that you made with your own hands. I took this opportunity to polish my tarnished silver. How satisfying! I am so pleased with the end result. Now picking out accessories for the day somehow feels extra special. And it became much easier too, because the organizational changes I made make it easy for me to see every single thing that I own. And that is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Tell me, did you get inspired to transform your own jewelry organizer? Or maybe another exciting idea sparked in your brilliant mind? I would love to know! Thank you so much for watching, my dear friends. I hope you liked this creative project. I had so much fun working on this project and I look forward to sharing more creative projects like this with you. Oh, and obviously I made over my husband's tray too, and he loves it. Don't forget to enter the giveaway! Thanks again, and I'll see you soon!